how do you think we could get to a place where we can design with performance in mind rather than it being an afterthought? I mean, shipping a user experience that is performant on mobile is sort of this symphony between designers and developers where I think we both have to understand the limitations of what's possible. Like if you're shipping down an experience on 3G or 4G, um, you're probably trying to get something that is useful to the user as quickly as possible. Like um, giving someone a shopping page where you know, they can see an item, but if they keep hitting you know, that button to, to buy and they can't really do anything, um, that's probably not what you want because it's gonna cost you a sale, right? Yeah. Um, and when we're trying to ship these experiences in mind, I think we need to think about uh, what is the minimal set of things that I want to you know, get down the wire? What does that mean for the design of that experience? Um, does it mean that I ship something that's a little bit more lightweight, a little bit you know, less splashy, but is minimal enough for the user to get you know, um, maximum benefit from? Um, and if I do want to integrate other design elements into there, how can I do that in a way where you know, we can keep loading performance in mind? Like it's, it's completely possible. You look at a lot of the um, mobile web experiences, the progressive web apps that large companies have been shipping lately, the yeah. Twitter lights, the housing.coms, the flip carts. And many of those experiences have thought about performance um, kind of holistically. Like when you, um, when you land on a landing page for any of those um, sites, they load up relatively quickly. They look really beautiful. Yeah. But then as you need to transition from one view to another, um, showing in some cases very different experiences, uh, you need to think about, well, how can I do that in a way where I can make it look pretty, I can optimize for perceived performance, and I can give the user something useful um, at the same time. Now, from a designer's perspective, you might want to make that look as, as great as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, because if you're, you know, maybe you're used to building a, a native app, maybe you're used to being able to just shove you know, as much data in there as you want. Um, for a mobile site, there are a few additional considerations there because you're basically trying to just ship um, in real time all of these bytes down the wire and you want them to load up really quickly. So I think you need to think about, well, what is, what is the limitation? What is the budget that the developer probably has um, in order to ship this down to the user? I'll let them figure out, okay, well, how much JavaScript, how much CSS mm -hmm. needs to be shipped down? But what can I do in order to um, minimize the amount of work that needs to be done to get that page loaded up and get that page useful? Uh, and so I think that um, from both sides, it, it benefits a lot from us talking to each other. Yeah. Uh, I think in recent years, I've seen you know, patterns like skeleton loading screens become quite popular um, for helping us do that sort of transition from one view to another. With an experience like that, I think that that requires both sides like understanding um, what, what it is they're trying to accomplish. They're trying to accomplish a really good user experience. And, you know, we're thinking, well, if we don't show them a loading spinner and we show them a skeleton screen instead, the user's gonna feel like something's happening as soon as they tap on a button. Yeah. They're gonna see, oh, so I'm probably gonna see a little bit of text here, a little, you know, maybe I'll see some images here, and they're probably gonna stay with that page a little bit longer rather than seeing, oh man, that, that spinner is just, you know, it's still spinning, I'm, I've been waiting a few minutes, nothing's really happening. And they're probably going to end up leaving the experience if they see something like that. Absolutely. I know there's like a, as you get to the three seconds, the more um, longer something takes. And this the whole concept of perceived performance, which is quite new for designers, is like um, something that's not necessarily really fast, but it feels fast because you're loading the skeleton layout first so you can feel something's happening. Even though technically side by side, a blank screen loading and the skeleton is basically the same. Um, but once you get to the three second mark, you've basically lost people's attention. Yeah. You're basically trying to hack human perception as much as you can. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting is when we design, we always design the final loaded thing. We don't really think about, all right, um, as this thing is being downloaded or uh, what, what, what happens if X fails to load? What happens if this image is like in a poor network environment? Yeah. And how do we get to a point where we can design before the, f the final thing, because you know you'll get there eventually. But what is the you know like understanding what a budget means from a design point of view? Because we don't yeah. really have a tool to actually say, all right, um, if I will say like you were in Sketch and you mm -hmm. were to highlight something, say, well, this is going to cost you ten seconds or the equivalent. I feel like we're both in the same bucket where as we've been getting closer and closer to thinking about mobile experiences and how to build them in an efficient way, um, we're having to, to think about loading um, a little bit differently to how we have in the past. Now, as a developer, I think about loading these days in sort of three stages. You've got the 
is it happening? So is there anything actually on the screen? Even if it's just like a toolbar or a header, then you've got the, um, is it useful? So maybe you're showing me some text at that point. Um, if I'm, you know, if I'm on the Times or something and you're showing me an article. And then the, there's the, uh, is it useful moment. So if I start tapping around the experience, can I actually go to other pages? Can I have something happen? Um, and from a developer side of view, uh, that requires you to think a little bit differently about how you're shipping things down. A developer probably has to think about, you know, maybe breaking up their JavaScript, breaking up their CSS, anything else that they're going to ship down the wire so that you're just shipping the minimal set of things. A designer has to think about, well, what are all of these loading states that a developer is going to try showing to the user? And how can I make sure that that looks um, as pleasing as possible, but is also improving perceived performance? Yeah. Providing a performing experience is something that requires, you know, close collaboration between two sides. Like, I don't think I'd ever seen skeleton screens as a concept until I started reading like blogs that designers were working on. Yeah, is there like A to Z of sort of states? Because I know like I've worked on sort of like coming up with sort of visual concepts for offline stuff, but is there like um, like you have like a component or a widget or a thing like is there different states or, or is it almost like I'm asking for something that doesn't exist because it depends on the context. It just depends. It's right? almost as if you're asking for is there a holistic piece of guidance for anything on the web? And the answer is no, <laughs> just no. Write it yourself. Yeah. Um, I think the answer to that is it is nuanced and it depends on what components you're displaying in your experience. I yeah. certainly know that like if you've got a card UI, you probably want to show like the card is maybe your skeleton um, and then maybe you show a placeholder for the images and the text that are going to be in that card. I've certainly seen some people that have taken it to extremes where, you know, they'll even show like a blurred out version of the image mm. or, you know, just use CSS to approximate what that, that piece of square is going to look like and then transition in the actual content when it's there. Um, but it's going to vary. It really depends on what your application is trying to do and what your latencies look like. Like if you, know, if, if you think that you're gonna be able to deliver an experience in two or three seconds, then maybe you only need you know, two states, two or three states. Um, if you are something super complex, you might need more than that. Yeah. Um, but I think that we're, as, as we're thinking a little bit more holistically about loading, um, from a developer side, we are considering ideas like progressive bootstrapping or progressive rendering where you know we go through these different loading states and try to show more and more things on the screen as they come in rather than just like holding off you know waiting until you know going from a page being completely blank and white uh, and then waiting until the very end and then just showing everything at once because as a user you're going to enjoy I think seeing at least something on the screen sooner yeah I mean I also wanted to bring up um, flash because I know, Good old Flash. yeah, Flash seemed to be like the middle person that could really bridge the gap between a developer and a designer. It's like conceptually, I under, I learned about code just through action script and the concept of the stage. It always seems to me it feels like the tool, but I don't know. Maybe I'm reminiscing about something that was great for designers but terrible for the users. You know, I would I would actually say at that time, you know, we were we were developing very heavily for the desktop web. I, I used to be a Flash developer and an ActionScript developer, and so if it weren't for the Flash IDE, like I know exactly what you mean about you know the stage and everything. I would never have been able to do like complex animations or anything like that were it not for Flash, and it was just such a great tool. But it also sort of you know it let you take all of your creativity and then export it into this sort of black box that you just threw at the browser. And I think we all got used to this idea of, you know what, I'm just going to be okay with waiting three minutes for this custom loading progress bar to show up and do something at the yeah. very end of it. Um, on the web today, like you could, you could build tools to do these things, but having them do that in an efficient way um, without you know, requiring a bunch of manual work on your part is not, we're not quite there just yet. I would love if there was a tool that allowed you to like work as productively as Flash allowed you to do um, and exported decent stuff. But it's been one of those historically hard problems with web content, like yeah. generating I mean, code. And also I think users are not as patient as they once were. I know it's kind of like, well, back in the old days, <laughs> which wasn't that long Back ago. in my day. Yeah, but like I remember watching, like, I think it was the MTV uh, website of like back in like 10, 15 years ago or like dazed and confused. Five minute loading time and you would wait and then you couldn't read the article properly because it was, 
something that was made for the for the maker, not for the viewer. Yeah, no. And I don't think people are not willing to wait for that sort of thing. It's well, almost definitely like, not on mobile. I mean, we know today that you know we, we say that you know three seconds is the ideal yeah. loading time. Try to get interactive in five seconds. We also know that for a lot of the long tail web, you know, it's it's not uncommon for pages to take 19 seconds to load. And maybe 19 seconds is okay if you've got a giant flash movie, but people are just going to leave the experience um, on mobile. So I think that we need to find that balance where you can come up with a tool like a Flash IDE or something, um, but have it either generate better code or just work better with the rest of the tools that we have available in the ecosystem. Um, I'm personally a big fan of things like Framer.js, where like designers can use code to come up with like really um, really beautiful experiences that can be complex, and then hand it off to developers to try to figure out, OK, well, how do I actually implement this in a way that can be loaded efficiently or can be done efficiently on the web? And that's not a bad place to be right now. I know that those tools are also evolving constantly. Like maybe, maybe a good um, eventual place could be you know, where a designer can design an experience and all the views and everything and tackle you know, motion and everything in a great way. And the same tool can give the developer you know, enough of the code as an output so that they can go and start hacking on it without it being so divorced from whatever the designer was yeah. working on. There's, there feels like something's missing. And it's almost like whatever that tool is will be the next evolutionary step for our industry. Um, and I guess I'm, what I'm saying is, when are you going to build it, Addy? <laughs> When any, are you going to build this? Yeah. Any day now. This entire thing is a commercial for my next, my next set of projects. In order to be good at something, you need to practice that skill. But in order to judge whether you are good at something, you just kind of need experience. Yeah.